Hi everyone, it's Vicky here with a new art journal layout. Today I'm happy to guest design for Paper Artsy, so let's get started. I'm working on my moleskin and I will be using the brayer technique for the background. I am going to use these uh, chalk paints. These are uh, called Fresco Finish Chalk Acrylics and they are by Paper Artsy. What I love about them is that they give a great tooth to your page and uh, just because they have that chalk on them you don't really need to apply any gesso on your page so you just go ahead and apply the paint directly on your page just like I'm doing here I'm not uh, adding any pressure to my prayer I'm just going up and down making sure that I get a nice coverage and now I'm going to uh, mix the colors so I'm moving to a next color and every time that I am using a new uh, chalk paint you will see the name on the screen and since these are chalk paints they dry super quickly which means that you don't really need to clean your mat or your brayer as you are working from one color to another also notice that I like to add just a dot of the color so that I make sure that the coverage is not heavy on my brayer since I don't want to cover up the whole thing and have uh, anything flat. Since I am going for the texture here I prefer to load the brayer again, again and again with just a little bit of paint and uh, this gives me the texture that I'm looking for. Now I'm moving to the blues and my first color is mermaid now a good thing uh, you need to know when you are using uh, Paper Artsy Fresco Finish paints is that uh, some of them are opaque, others are uh, semi-opaque and there are the translucent, the transparent ones. So when you start it's always nice to start with an opaque because this is going to give a nice texture on your background and uh, a good coverage. So when uh, you start to build up the colors one layer on top of the other it's better to uh, use semi-opaque or uh, transparent colors so that you don't cover up what's underneath. I'm moving on to a, my middle blue color, that's Caribbean Sea. I think this is one of my favorites from their collection. And uh, I am only doing vertical and uh, horizontal strokes. As I am applying the blue, I am going all over the green uh, part of the page as well to mix up the colors. Of course, nothing is uh, blended smoothly here since we are going for a totally abstract uh, background. Now, for the fold, if you cannot uh, get there with your brayer, just use your finger or a brush. Finally, I am going to use my darker color and just add a little bit more texture on the sky. Now I'm happy with all the color at the background, so I'm going to go ahead and build up some texture. I am going to use this uh, text stamp by Paper Artsy, and I'm going to stamp it on, on the left and on the right side of my layout. This is going to frame it somehow. Uh, to do so, I'm using Archival Link, and that's Aquamarine. Now you see that the stamp impression there isn't even visible because I chose an ink pad that is very subtle uh, against that background. So now I am going to go a little bit heavier. I want to have a nice impression there but at the same time I don't want it to be too vibrant. So I'm happy with how it looks now. So I'm going to do it again on the other side. And as I'm doing that, just to let you know that you can find a full list of all the supplies that I'm using today just below the video in the description area, as well as on my blog. Paper Artsy is an English company, but uh, they are also available on uh, the US, and you will find links to everything down below. So now I am going to use another stamp set to add a little bit of texture on the sky. Again, I'm using the same ink pad, and uh, I'm making sure that I rotate the stamp with uh, those little dots just to make sure that I don't get the same repetitive impression. I am going to switch uh, archival links and now I am going to go with uh, Fern Green just to make sure that this is not too vibrant on my page, I am doing second generation stamping, which means that I first uh, stamp on a scrap paper and then directly on my page. And here is a close-up, so you can see how the background looks with all those different layers of stamping and painting. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a frame. I am going to use this stencil by Paper Artsy, and if you see there is a nice edge on one side, which I am going to use to create the frame. 
So I'm going to use the stencil as a mask, mask off uh, a part of the page and on the rest of it at the edge I'm going to apply black fresco finish paint. And I really love the color names, this one is called Little Black Dress. I am applying the paint with my sponge dabber but of course you can apply it with your brush. And you can see the result, I am going to move the stencil all over and I am going to repeat the exact same process all around the edge. Just because this is an opaque color you will get a great coverage with just one layer. So now I'm going to use these adorable stamp sets and I'm going to mix and match stamps to create my scene. I'm going to stamp everything directly on my page with archival link but at this stage I'm not worrying too much about the impression. All I'm going for is uh, for the general scene because I'm going to paper piece the flowers, the birds and the clouds. So I don't really care about the top of uh, the flowers but I really need the stems. For my sky I am going to stamp this cloud a few times just to make it more interesting and uh, with uh, by stamping I am committing to where I want the clouds to be when I paper piece them and also I don't care about doing any masking just because I'm going to stick paper on top of paper so you won't see that cloud over that flower. Now there is a stamp with uh, three adorable uh, birds which I am going to stamp one by one. They are in a row but I want them uh, separated. So I'm going to stamp one at the top of uh, that flower or tree, whatever it is. Uh, now I'm going to do the same technique for the other one. So I'm partly inking up the stamp, making sure that only the bird I want is stamped. And now I'm going to stamp uh, the bird in the middle. And just like I stamped the flowers because I needed the stem, I am stamping the birds because I need their legs. Because when I am going to paper piece those birds, I am not going to cut out those legs for them. So I have them stamped already there. Now I am using my white gel pen and I am going all around that edge between the black border and my main image and this is going to make the edge crispier and it's going to help uh, the main image pop even more against that black uh, background. So here is how my layout looks at the moment. I'm going to leave that aside and I'm going to work on my paper piecing images. So I'm going to create my own uh, pattern paper. But first I am going to stamp the clouds since they are the easiest. I am using some uh, white scrap paper. I am going to stamp four times the clouds and I am going to use the scissors to cut them out. Now just because they were too plain I am using vanilla fresco finish and I am stamping without a text stamp that I used for the background all over them. Now this is very subtle but you will see the result if you take a look at uh, the close up photos at the end of this video. And now it's time to create my own pattern paper. I have uh, four different images of uh, leaves, so I want to create some green pattern paper. I'm again going to use my fresco finish. I'm using two different colors. I'm starting with a lighter one, which is Hey Pesto. I am applying it with a prayer, and then again I'm going to go all over it with a darker color. 
and uh, create the texture. Now I am doing this instead of just applying uh, it with a brush because I want to get the same exact texture that I had on the background and this is going to bring everything together, the focal images, with the background uh, techniques. Of course you can build up your layers and uh, go back again and again with uh, your first or your second color until you are happy with it. I'm pretty much happy with how it looks at the moment, so I'm going to stop here. What is great about chalk finish is that they uh, dry super quickly, so I'm ready to stamp. And since I have that great texture going on, I can pick up uh, different areas where I want my leaves to be stamped, so I get a different uh, variation on colors and uh, highlighting and shading at the same time. I'm going to use my scissors to cut them out. And this is a great technique so that you don't get uh, end up with uh, a flat uh, color all over your images. Now I have uh, done the exact same technique for all those different uh, pattern papers that you see. I have created them on my own. The, for each and every one of them I have used two different colors, a lighter and a darker one, just like I did for creating my green pattern paper. Now I am going to stamp uh, the different uh, flowers on them. I'm just trying to decide what color is going to go where. As you can see, I'm stamping the same uh, flowers again and again on all the different pattern papers so that I have a big choice and uh, choose whatever I want uh, to stick where. Also, at uh, this stage, I wasn't sure about the color of the birds, so I am again stamping them on every pattern paper that I have. And you will see that at the end I decided to go with uh, yellow. Now I have cut out all the little pieces and it's time to stick everything down. To do so I am using a brush with my matte medium. At this point I can uh, call my page done, but you know me and shading, I just have to do a little bit of it at the end. So I am going to use some of my fresco finish paints and uh, I am using the darker colors that I have used for the pattern papers that I have created. And you can see the colors I am using right now on your screen. I am going to use a little bit of water, not too much, and uh, a thin paintbrush. Also, I made sure that the colors that I am using to go all over the stamped images are semi-opaque or transparent and this way they are not going to cover up the stamped images as you can see now. If you go with an opaque color then you will lose all that detail stamping. The layer of shading that I have applied is really really thin and uh, it doesn't lose the texture that I have underneath. So now I'm using my white gel pen and I'm adding just a little bit of highlighting on uh, the different parts of my layout. And this is going to make them pop and make them even more uh, whimsical looking. Now I am going to create some splashes. I'm using Snowflake Fresco Finish uh, which I have diluted with water and then used a thin brush to uh, make some splashes. And finally it's time to stamp my quote. I am using another paper artsy stamp set and I am going with the word dream as well as the phrase that says everything you can imagine is real. I'm going to stamp them with a black archival ink and as you can see I am not going to get a great impression by stamping the word dream but that's not really a problem.
It's always difficult to stamp uh, and have a great impression on a bulky book. I can always go over it with a black marker and I'm also going to do a border, a white border with my gel pen. You will see photos at the end of the video. And that was the project for today. I hope you had fun and got inspired. And if you did, don't forget to leave me a comment as well as give me a thumbs up on my YouTube channel. Here are some close-up photos of today's project. And if you need more inspiration, here are two more videos where I am creating art journal layouts using the infusions by Paper Arts. Thank you all for watching!